What do you get when you have a Broadway professional and a camera crew? Long story short, you get a lot of cool info when you get Showbiz You Luminaries. This week, we talked to Tony Award winning writer Joe DiPietro, who won for Best Book and Score for the original musical Memphis. His other works include I Love You, You're Perfect Now Change and the Tony nominated musical Nice Work If You Can Get It. Let's talk about the, the journey of Joe. What right. was that moment where you said, I think I, I want to do this, I, I want to write? Oh, well, the thing about being a writer is that no one gives you permission to do it. There's no degree that's going to lead to a magical career in writing. There's no path that every writer takes. Like if you, you know, if you want to be a lawyer, you <laughs> go to college, you go to law school, you take certain tests, and then you're a lawyer. So to be a writer, you have to really, I think, love to write. And you, ha I wrote for a long time, and no one cared. You know, I wrote at night, I, I worked in advertising, I just, but whatever it was, I was young and I uh, was stupid and I loved to do it and I thought, I am just going to do it because I love it. And that's really sort of, I think, how the journey starts for every writer. You have to, you know, sit down and write it because you love it. What were some of the first things that you wrote? Um, uh, well, it's funny, when I was in high, this is high school, when I was a junior, I was taking a creative writing class and a really wonderful teacher uh, named Mrs. Milch who taught creative writing and we had to do um, one of each type of discipline of writing. We had to write a poem, we had to write a short story, we had to write a short play. So, um, and then at the end of the year, there was something called the Scholastic Writing Awards, uh, which was a national contest, Scholastic Magazine, it still exists. And we had to submit one of our pieces into one of these categories. So I s got the best grade on my one act <laughs> play, which is probably about 10 pages long. And so I said, I got an A on this. I'm going to submit this one. And it wound up winning the contest and like, you know, best dramatic script. Uh, I remember that was the moment it put it in the very back of my little mind saying, maybe you can do this someday. So it was a great encouragement for me. What was the, the first time you got paid for your work? That? Oh, that's an excellent question. Uh, the first time I got paid before I wrote anything, which was really, you know, essentially commissioned to write something, was a real thrill because that's the first time you really feel like, oh, they've seen some of my work and I don't have to write a word and I'm getting this <laughs> little nice, it was a little, but it was a nice paycheck. Uh, and then, of course, the pressure becomes, well, I actually have to write it and deliver and not get fired because I don't quite <laughs> own this. Well, I like I own my own stuff. So it was actually for um, the first commission I ever had was uh, for a Gershwin show, uh, which eventually became nice work if you can get it, which uh, played on Broadway uh, for a year and a half um, last year. And, uh, and that and, and th that was about... 10, 15 years before that just was a long, long development process. And it, I, I wrote it, it became something, then it became something else and something else. But that was the first time I got paid hmm. without writing. So that was a thrill. But probably the first time, the first time I ever really got produced was my show, I Love You, You're Perfect, Now Change, which got produced at a uh, sadly defunct theater called the American Stage Company, which was in hmm. Teaneck, New Jersey, not far from uh, New York City, and also not far from where I grew up and I had written these um, sketches about people who were single and, and dating and the producer had seen them in this tiny, tiny little basement theater in New York and they said, put music in it. This is a musical review. And the only musical review I had ever seen before was Ain't Misbehavin', which seemed very different. So I was like, I don't know what they really mean, musical review. It's sort of these sketches about dating and relationships and all that things. And so I met up with this uh, writer, uh, composer, named Jimmy Roberts, who was a very talented composer. And uh, he said, let's, let's, because I really like your sketches, let's just put in a couple songs, see what happens. So he sort of guided me through that. And we did a reading. And... Um, suddenly it's in the reading with these like three or four new songs it just opened it up like I could feel mm. like oh this is a whole new audience it's a whole new way of telling a story and it has this the music has this emotional impact that it that the show didn't have without music um, and then that show um, through not probably all that long probably maybe two or three years got produced at American Stage Company and then uh, I actually got a paycheck <laughs> it wasn't a big paycheck no but, but uh, it was a paycheck and that is a thrilling moment for a writer because it's like people paid money for these tickets yeah. to see my show and now I'm actually uh, making uh, you know I'm getting money for it and then that show obviously went on to have a 
Yes. A very long and successful run. Yeah, I Love Your Perfect Now Change went uh, to two other theaters after the American Stage Company. And we opened in uh, the West Side Theater on West 43rd Street in New York City, which is a f probably the best off-Broadway theater, in, in my opinion. And um, we came in, we got the theater in August of 1996, I believe it was, and we got it in August because uh, the theater owners didn't think we would last <laughs> past like September, maybe if we got lucky, December. Uh, they were very, they were very nice about it, but th that was just sort of what they told us later. So we got this prime real estate, and they actually had a show that was back, we call a backup, <laughs> that was going to come in after we closed. That was a big heralded hit out of town. It was, a, I think, a straight play, and uh, and then we wound up running for 12 years. So um, that was a good thing. Not too bad for them either. <laughs> Not too, no, they were very happy and they, you know, it's, it's funny because it was my first taste really of the business of theater. Um, you know, as a writer, I'm like, I'm not really a businessman. I, what I love to do is, you know, sit down and, as I like to say, create uh, arguments between fictional people. I mean, that's like <laughs> what I do all day, which is weird. But that's what I love to do. And suddenly you have this commercial show running and making money, and I was suddenly able to support myself to write other things, and I had some other opportunities arose. So it was a real um, heady and instructive time about, oh, you have to, at some point, every artist of any type at some point should learn a bit about their business. What makes the business go? In my case, what makes a play get produced? What makes it run? What's marketing? Mm -hmm. You know, who what are who are producers who know what they're doing? Like all those things, you know, it's just like like any business you you know, the business changes, so you need to constantly uh, keep up with it. You uh -huh. talked about your uh your second grade teacher and I believe your sixth grade teacher uh -huh. who were mentors, but who are some other mentors that, that have helped you get to right. where you are today? Well, the biggest mentor in my life was uh, Jamie Hammerstein, who was Oscar Hammerstein's uh, youngest son. And uh, Jamie uh, was a very fine director and he ran his father's organization and he was also the first uh, person who produced me. And he produced my first two shows in New York, I Love You, Perfect, Now Change, and Over the River and Through the Woods. And Jamie was sort of the one, the first person of note uh, who had said to me, you know, you can do this. He said, you, you might get some offers to go to LA and you might be tempted to go there because there's a lot of opportunities for people who, uh, you know, write drama and comedy. He said, but you should stay in theater if you will love to do it because you can do it. Uh, and Jamie really was also the person who told me how to rewrite, like what, how to listen to your audience how to not listen to all of the noise that goes around when you have a new show and opinions and this and that. So he really uh, taught me all that. So it was really Jamie and then, um, and he died uh, very suddenly of a heart attack. Uh, mm. and now it was, now it was uh, several years ago, so yeah. But, it, but it, it, he really, I, I wouldn't be here without Jamie Hammerstein. And are you finding yourself now being in that role? For, for people? Well, I love to talk to young people, and um, uh, to, to, I love uh, to take, uh, there's a, a TDF organization called Open Doors, which I'm a mentor, where you take groups of uh, high school kids, the same eight high school kids, to six shows a year, and then afterwards you get together with them and talk about the themes and what it means and how it affects their lives, and so that's been uh, very gratifying. Uh, but yeah, no, I love to like, you know, and I'm, I'm I'll always, you know, read someone's script and give comments and stuff. But you know, it's it's an interesting thing. You know, when you mentor someone and when you teach someone, the people who you really feel have a hunger for to doing this, and you know, and they have a talent for it, but they have a hunger and, and what that is and how they can sort of make their way is is, is always fascinating. But yeah, no, I, I mean, I think you have to give back somehow. You have to give back somehow.